What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 more tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2023. Now as always, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Adaptive Brightness. Now essentially, this feature is going to allow your display to automatically adjust the brightness based on your environment. So if you're like outside in the sun for example or in any kind of bright area, the display is going to brighten up to make it easier to see. But if you're like in a normal indoor setting or maybe in a darker room, it's going to dim the display and this is going to be more efficient for the battery and it can also make the display a bit easier on your eyes. So to get to this feature, go to settings, then from here, go to display. And as you can see, adaptive brightness is right here. Toggle it on and it will adjust right away. Now I'm gonna show you how to actually turn off your phone. Now you would think this would be pretty straightforward. I mean, in the history of Android phones or just smartphones in general, all you would normally need to do is press and hold your power key. But with this phone and many others these days, when you press and hold the power key, by default, instead of opening your power menu, it's gonna open the assistant instead. So to get to the power menu, there are a couple of different ways. First of all, you can press the power key and the volume up key, so like this. And there we go. In addition to this, you can open your quick menu by swiping down twice. So one, two, and the power menu is right here too. And in addition to this, on one hand the assistant shortcut is at least kinda useful, but I feel like it's not altogether necessary, since after all, with button navigation you can just press and hold on the home button. In gesture navigation, you basically just swipe up from a corner and that will open your assistant too. So my point is, while I guess having another shortcut can be cool if you use the assistant a lot, it's definitely not necessary. So if you want to change it back to use the actual power key as a power key, what you can do is go to your settings. From here, go to gestures. And then from this menu, go to where it says press and hold power button. So right here. Then from here, by default, hold for assistant will be on. But if you toggle it off, now if you press and hold the power key, it's going to open the power menu instead. Now we're going to go over some settings for the stylus. To get to these, first of all, go to settings. And then from here, go to where it says stylus. So right here. And from this menu, up top, the first thing we see is something called stylus writing, so by default this will be on. So with this on you can use the stylus to write directly into a text box, so pretty cool. So when device is locked, when you take out the stylus, by default, it will open Moto Note. You can't have it open Keep Notes or do nothing. So I'm going to demonstrate. As you can see, the display is locked right now. I'll take out the stylus. And it opens Moto Notes. So if you're someone who likes to take handwritten notes, definitely useful. And then when the device is unlocked, if we go here, you can add up to six different shortcuts. So I'm going to add Amazon too. So now when the device is unlocked, if I take out the stylus, it's going to show the shortcuts right here. And again, you can change these to pretty much anything you want. So definitely nice to have. And then we have a few different settings under general. So first of all, if you have your stylus out for a longer period of time, it will give you a notification. You can have this on or off, last known location. So if you wanna be a little bit more strict on tracking the stylus, sound, so when you're writing it will have a little sound. It's not really loud, but you can kinda hear it. And then finally, by default, when you put the stylus back, it will vibrate. But of course, you can have this on or off. So in general, the stylus itself doesn't have a ton of different settings, but overall for what it is, I do think it does get the job done. Now I'm going to show you how to get to your NFC settings. Now after you set this up for the first time, you're probably not going to go to this page too often, but if you ever need to, to get to your NFC settings, go to the main settings menu. Then from here, go to connected devices. From here, go to connection preferences. NFC is right here. And as you can see, by default, it is on. Also by default, the actual NFC icon is not in the status bar. But if you want, you can turn it on. So as you can see right up here. In addition to this, by default, the phone actually doesn't have to be unlocked in order to use NFC. But if you want, you can turn this on. And then finally, if you go to contactless payments, here you can set up your payment default. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called the sidebar. Now this is basically like Samsung's edge panel and kind of like the menu that comes out when you take out the stylus. So again, if I pulled this out, this little shortcut menu is going to show up. And again, you can customize these to add different apps and stuff like that. But in addition to this, there is another shortcut bar you can access without even taking out the stylus. So to enable it, go to settings. From here, go to gestures. And from this menu, right at the top, go to sidebar. 
enable it, and essentially, with this on, this line right here will show up. And if you pull it out, this is basically what the sidebar is like. So again, it's basically like Samsung's Edge panel. A bunch of different shortcuts, pretty useful. And from here, if you go to settings, you can add and remove different shortcuts. And unlike the stylus menu, where you can only have six different shortcuts, with the sidebar, you can choose up to seven. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to change your screen color mode. To do this, go to settings. Then from here, go to display. And from here, go to where it says colors. So right here, and as you can see, by default, the color mode will be saturated, which basically enhances the colors, makes things a bit more vivid. You can also make it a bit warmer or a bit cooler. But if you want, you can change it to natural, which isn't going to be quite as bright and saturated. But at the same time, the colors are going to look a bit more natural and normal. And while I personally prefer saturated, it is really up to personal preference. So it's definitely nice to have a couple different options. The next thing I'm going to show you is an additional shortcut to get to your camera. Now, of course, by default, you can always just open the camera app right here. But in addition to this, once you activate it in the settings, by going like this. From here, go to gestures and then go to where it says double press power key. With this enabled, you can open the camera by double pressing the power key, so like this. But in addition to this, we actually have a third way. So back in the gestures menu, go to where it says quick capture. So quick capture is right here. Make sure this is enabled, and when it is, to open your camera, go like this. And as you can see, the camera opens right up. So yeah, this phone has quite a few different ways to open the camera, but it's definitely nice to have some options. Now I'm going to show you a feature called Battery Saver. As the name implies, this is basically going to help extend your battery life, and keep in mind, you're not going to want to use this all the time, because even though it does extend your battery life, it does limit your phone's functionality. Probably the only time you're really going to want it on is in an emergency when maybe your phone is under 20% or so, but you still want to keep it on long enough to get to a charger. Now there are two different ways to get to Battery Saver. The first way is simply by going to settings. Then from here, go to battery. And from here, go to battery saver. Here you can turn it on, and you can also have it turn on automatically. Now, schedule is not quite what it seems. It's not like a time-based schedule, but instead it's based on battery percentage. So if you go here, you can have it turn on at 10% or 20% or whatever you want. In addition to this, by default, it will automatically turn off when your phone is basically fully charged. So definitely nice so you don't have to worry about turning it off yourself. And in addition to this, also keep in mind, if you're in a situation where maybe you want to turn it on quickly, you don't actually have to go all the way to your settings to do it. Because by default, it will be in your quick menu. So again, to get to this, swipe down twice from the top. So one, two, and battery saver is in this menu. By default, it's on the second page. So right here, and Battery Saver also automatically puts the phone in dark mode, so again, when it's on, you definitely will know. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Nightlight. Now, if you're like me, you might like to keep your phone at 100% brightness at all times. I mean, adaptive brightness is cool and all, but personally for me, I just like to keep it consistent. But the downside to this is sometimes the blue light from the display can be a bit harder on your eyes, especially later at night. But luckily, the Nightlight feature does definitely help with this. So to get to this, go to Settings. From here, go to display. And from here, nightlight is right here under color. Toggle it on. And as you can see, the display is a bit warmer. You can also customize it a bit more. So if you go here, as you can see, you can make it stronger or weaker. And you can also schedule it to turn on automatically. So you can have it turn on from sunset to sunrise or set a custom time. And if you want to turn it on and off quickly without having to go to settings, keep in mind just like Battery Saver, and a lot of other features for that matter, Nightlight is in the quick menu, so if you want to quickly turn it on and off without having to go to your settings every time, you can simply swipe down twice from the top, and Nightlight will be right here. But those were 10 more tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2023. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram, and as always, I will see you in the next video.